Let's begin. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to Pods Above Replacement, part of the Padres Hot Tub Podcast Network. My name is Rafi Cantor. I am the producer of Padres Hot Tub and joining me from the Mile High City, he's a park-adjusted smarty pants. It's John Bracona. Hey there, Rafi. You ready to talk stats? I've got I've got a stat for you that's going to make you say, whoa, and another one that you can explain to Blake Snell next time you see him. Wow. That's a two-for episode. That's right. We're talking about WOBA and WRC+, Plus, uh, two of the stats that we reference most on this show, so we're looking forward to talk about it, talking about it. And uh, I, I don't, I don't even. Want, I'm just so excited. Uh, I don't, I don't want to like <laughs> stall anymore. Let's just, let's just get into it, John. Uh, why don't you start with uh, talking about some woe before us? I think that baseball might have a, a naming problem because woe and WRC <laughs> plus are very crucial stats that I think that anyone can and should know, but. I think those names might be throwing some folks off. Like, Woba, I don't even know how to spell that. Like, what's that little W in front of the other letters? What's going on there? WRC+, plus. that just sounds confusing as hell. But, I mean, they're both based on stats that we already know. They're just different calculations of stats that we already know. So they're not particularly confusing. At least I don't think they are. But they're important. So let's get into them. So, starting with Woba. Woba is very similar to what OPS is. But the point is that OPS has some just strangeness to it in general, like the slugging part of WOBA, I mean of OPS is suggests that a homer is four times more valuable than a single when it's not and you're adding two completely different numbers together for some reason to get OPS and it's just a, a weird wonky statistic. And so WOBA, the point of it is to be a more precise version of the same data overall, which is to say that they want to suggest that a single is worth a precise amount less than a double, which is worth a precise amount less than a triple, which is worth a precise amount less than a home run, and then just give that uh, overall value. And what they're doing is putting it on a on base percentage like scale so that we can all kind of understand it intuitively because we all know what a good and what a bad on base percentage is so you know we can just do that same thing with woba you know, is a 320 woba that's you know average and then a really good on per- base percentage any of those numbers would be a good woba anything that's a bad on base percentage would be a bad woba and so like i said they, they take a little bit more of a precise route to the value of every single um plate appearance and that value changes to from year to year on an empirical basis suggesting that anytime they hit a double the total amount of runs that were scored off of it or ended up scoring off of it gives you a number and then they compare that to how many runs that were created off home runs triples doubles singles base on balls etc and then they you know put those all together put them over your plate appearances and then put out a number and that number will vary from year to year um there are some like debatable parts where hit by pitches tend to not tend to like year over year are worth more than walks and you say why is that that doesn't make any sense it's basically the same thing and like i said it's empirical so one there are fewer so the sample size is smaller and two folks that hit a lot of people tend to give up more runs than folks that have you know occasionally give up a base on ball And at the same time, a two out walk is worth just as much on your WOBA calculation as a zero out walk. But in reality, what's worth more, it's the zero out walk is going to be worth more. So there's, there's a little bit of like, does this apply to a single at bat type thing? No, not really. Does it apply to a season as a whole? Yeah, probably once sample sizes get large enough. And so... Like I said, you're you're doing a scale based on, you know, the actual outcomes of a player, and there just is a number that they get every single year, and that is a constant for that number, and they multiply it by how many times you got your single, how many times you got your double. And so we're going to put a quick calculation for Manny Machado's WOBA up on the screen, but it's not particularly complex. It's very similar to OPS, except that you have a constant that you have to multiply each of these outcomes by. And so there's a constant for how many 
runs a base on ball is worth. So for Manny Machado, he had 53 unintentional base on ball. So uh, fact about this is that intentional walks are just taken out completely. Don't necessarily know why, but that is what it is. So he had 53 unintentional walks times that by the constant, which is 6.89. And then you got how many, how much his weighted value was for walks last year. And then you do the same thing by hit by pitches. He had one, the constant seven point or point seven two one. Same thing for singles. He had 102 constants eight or 0.884. Same thing for doubles, same thing for home runs, et cetera. And you can, you know, we'll show you the calculation. It adds up to exactly what his Wilbur was overall, which was 382 last year. So I talked about it a little bit, but did you want to give a couple rules of thumb for Woba overall? Yeah. So uh, like John mentioned, uh, Woba is is normalized so that it's equal to what the on-base percentages of the year or in a given season uh, for for the year. That being said, there are some general rules of thumb that are good to practice. Where if you if you get a flash like glance at someone's Woba, it it'll give you just a general like okay, this is what the quality of their year was. So um, again, uh, you know. 320 is about average because that generally is about the average uh, on base percentage for uh, a given year in baseball. Sometimes that fluctuates, but you can use 320 as your benchmark. And so the same apply, app, uh, applies for Woba. 320 is about average. So if someone has a 320, 323, 317 Woba, you can say, okay, their total offensive contribution to the team was about average for a given season. And then basically every 20 points is is kind of a a grade in either direction so a 340 woba is uh, about above average uh and you know you get to the 360 370 range uh then it's it's you start to get to great and then once you hit above 400 you're like oh my god this player is excellent you know uh, this is a juan soto level type mike trout sort of contribution same goes for uh when you're going down you know you, you get to the the 300 range or woba that's that's pretty that's pretty bad and then you know by the time you get to the the 280 level this is a player that's probably replacement level and is is not long for the league um if they are consistently putting up levels like that um so a, another good rule of thumb is a 20 points of woba is about equal to 10 runs above average and if you recall in our war episode that we just posted um 10 runs above average uh, it, it, give or take is about worth a, a win. Um, you know, runs per win generally fluctuates between nine and ten. Uh, sometimes it goes a little over ten. Uh, but a, a good rule of thumb is is that ten runs is is about worth a win. So you can also look at someone's uh, you know, woba and compare two players and say, okay, this player had a three fifty woba, and then this other player had a three thirty woba, and okay, the player with a three fifty woba was probably worth about one win offensively more than the player who had a 330 Woba. Um, so it's it's these kind of tiny things that allow you to, uh, you know, compare players, uh, you know, in a rough estimation. And this is the sort of thing that we were talking about in the war episode too. These are baseball's best guesses. You know, it's, it's not a perfect science, um, but it, it, it's getting as much data as possible and baseball is a sport that has a lot of data and trying to take big ideas and break them down into a single number and uh for what it's worth i think it's pretty cool and pretty good and there's an even cooler one in my opinion mostly because (laughs) it's my initials and if you're part of our padres hot tub discord you can become a member of that by becoming a patreon supporter for just five dollars a month patreon.com slash padres hot tub John and I are on there constantly, but you will not see Rafi Cantor on there. You will see Weighted Rafi Cantor Plus, uh, which is my <laughs> Discord name uh, and is the name, the 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 initials of a certain other stat that John, uh, I don't know if you want to break down for us. Yeah, so WRC Plus, let's talk about it so that we can teach Blake Snell the next time we see him, as we see him all the time, I'm sure. So... We went into WOBA first because WRC Plus is heavily dependent on WOBA. However, WOBA needs to be manipulated a couple times in order to get to WRC Plus. So first you take your WOBA 
And that is a rate-based statistic, which means that you can have, you know, a 40, a 400 WOBA in 10 plate appearances. And that's obviously dramatically less valuable than a 400 WOBA over 600 plate appearances. So you have to, you have to turn it into a counting stat in order to see just how many runs that was worth in however many plate appearances they had. And then all you have to do after that is adjust it for the park in which you played and then the, the league in which you played, like AL versus NL, which as we described in the war episode is getting dangerously close to being about the same, um, those run environments. But those, I mean, it, it sounds simple. You're just turning the rate-based stat into a counting stat and then adjusting for park and league. But the thing is that those those adjustments can be dramatically different. And for us as Padres fans, they can make our numbers look a lot worse than they are. Because, I mean, in the past five years, the run environment for Petco Park has been tied for the second worst in the league behind only the New York Mets home field. And so when you see those WOBAs, they're going to be lower than anybody's WOBA at, say, Coors Field or Fenway Park. And, you know, you you can't really do a one-to-one comparison because we have to play in Petco and they get to play in Coors, right? And so just to put some numbers on that to exemplify how big of a difference that's making in this modern era is Manny Machado last year had his near MVP year and he had a 382 WOBA. And so when you adjust that for the park in which he played, Petco Park, you end up getting a WRC plus that's 152. And as we've explained in the past, WRC plus and all plus statistics and all minus statistics are based on 100 points being average. So when we say that Manny Machado had 152 WRC plus, we are saying that he was 52% better than league average. So every single point above or below 100 is 1%. And so he had 152 WRC plus, that's 52% above league average. The year before, in 2021, C.J. Crone had a 383 WOBA, which is just in line with Manny Machado's 382 WOBA of last year. But playing in Coors Field, his WRC Plus dropped all the way down to 126, so only 26% better than league average, which is, once again, 26 more percent below Manny Machado last year. So just overall, we're talking average is 100 based on how your WOBA, how much success you had at the plate, adjusting for how many at-bats, and then the park and the league, what percentage were you better or worse than league average? And you can get largely different WRC pluses than those little WOBAs that you'll see on the board based on the parks. Did you want to maybe give an example of where those numbers can get particularly wonky? Yeah, so um, again, why I love WRC plus is it normalizes for park, It normalizes for league, and it also normalizes for era because, as we know, baseball is a game that's evolved a lot. And, you know, in the 80s and 90s, people were stealing a lot. And, you know, up until the rule changes this year, people were barely stealing at all. And in the the 50s and 60s, people also didn't steal a lot of bases. And so you see this kind of, you know, uptick and then downtick and everything. And so you have to sort of normalize things. Um, The same goes for total offensive production in general. And uh, this is going to be apparent for anyone who was around to watch baseball in the 90s when we were playing in what has been widely known as the steroid era, uh, where offense was off of the charts. And uh, because of that, the average player playing at that time had offensive numbers that if they put up those numbers today, would they would be leading the league, basically, in, in offensive production. And uh, we don't need to look any further than Dante Bichette, father of Bo Bichette, who I always want to say Boba Fett, and it's really hard for me not to. <laughs> uh, but Dante Bichette, in 1999, he played for the Colorado Rockies, and he put up a stat line that uh, was 298, uh, 298 batting average on base percentage of 354 and a slugging percentage of 541 that adds up to an OPS of 895 and that being said (laughs) his WRC plus was 100 he had a league average offensive contribution when he put up almost a 900 OPS um 
To put that in perspective, in 2022, his OPS would have been the seventh best OPS in all of Major League Baseball. Manny Machado, who we just talked about in 2022, putting up an, uh, an MVP cal- caliber performance, had a 298 batting average, 366 on base percentage, and a 531 slugging percentage. That is an 897 OPS. Okay, so almost exactly the same OPS, but between the park factor, which at, at you know, there's a great article on Fangraphs about this. I'll just Google Dante Bichette 1999 and you'll find it. And it um, references that this particular course field always is kind of an offensive powerhouse. But this particular season in 1999, for whatever reason, like walks were out of control, BAPIP was out of control, like all of this crazy stuff was out of control. And so uh, the offense was was crazy high that year. And then we obviously talked about war in our last episode. And there are positional adjustments. And then there are league adjustments and all this stuff. And uh, Manny Machado playing third base. It's, it's I wouldn't call it a premium uh, defensive position. But it is, you know, you do get a, a slight two and a half run bonus on fan graphs for playing third base. And he played it plays third base particularly well. You know, he had uh, six point nine defensive runs last year above average. Uh, Add in the positional adjustment, that's basically a win just for him playing third base the way that he does. Um, Dante Bichette played left field, which is one of the least valuable positions, and he played left field in gigantic course field. Um, so he was he was already a poor offensive player. Usually played right field, was playing left field. And uh, there's an argument to be made that left field in course is actually a little bit more difficult than right field just because there's more surface area and just the way the ball plays there. And so uh, he was particularly ill-suited to be playing uh, left field at course. And so you add in his his league average offensive performance, given the fact of, of how people were playing in course field that year, and add in his, his truly terrible defensive pr- performance... He put up negative 2.1 war <laughs> in 1999. Two wins below average, and all of that while ha- putting up an 895 OPS. And that just goes to show you why I think WRC Plus and war, you know, generally, are, are so cool, is because you can look at Dante Bichette in 1999 and him putting up those crazy numbers... And you can have people say all the time, like, I, you know, I, I yearn for the days of Dante Bichette when, when guys <laughs> would just hit and, you know, Dante Bichette was this scrub and he was still hitting 300 and blah, 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 blah. And you can say, nay, 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 nay. They, that was a, a league average performance. And, uh, you know, Dante Bichette, if he came down here in 2022 at Peco Park and played that same performance, he would not touch Manny Machado, even though on paper, they quote unquote hit the same. So that is what is so cool about these stats is that you're adjusting for where people play, you're adjusting for who they play for, and you're also adjusting for the era in which they play. And it's a a common parlance that we can use to try and compare seasons across eras. So um, very cool stat. Uh, Any any, uh, parting words of wisdom for the folks before we shut this baby down? Yeah, I just I just think it's it's fun that, you know, Dante Bichette and Manny Machado had almost the identical season at the plate in terms of outcome, uh, OPS, WOBA, slash line. They all look exactly the same. And then you start adjusting for defense, you start adjusting for park, you start adjusting for era, and suddenly he's a 9.5 different war <laughs> player. 9.5 <laughs> difference. And then you take the, I mean, a, a similar vein, you take his 100 WRC+. plus. That's worse than Hassan Kim's WRC plus last year. His WRC plus was 105. And so Hassan Kim would be expected last year in 1999, like last year, Hassan Kim placed in 1999 Coors Field would have been expected to exceed a slash line of 298, 354, and 541. That's what we would have been getting from, from Hassan Kim according to the math, that's, you know, just wild stats out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, again, the Padres and Giants played the season in Mexico City. There obviously isn't really a big enough sample size off of those two games to try and get a very accurate park factor. 
But if a team, for instance, as was talked about in the past, started playing in Mexico City and you had these crazy offensive differences, you would want to use a stat like WRC Plus to try and compare players because it just it, the numbers wouldn't make sense on their face. <laughs> uh, so again, you know, these advanced stats are how we try and make sense of this truly stupid game that we love. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, with that in mind, uh, thanks again for watching an episode of Summer School, a, a, a sub-series uh, that I forgot to plug the title of at the beginning, but this is called <laughs> Summer School. We hope you're watching on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're at Padres Hot Tub on YouTube. Uh, that we're, we've been throwing up data and stats as we always do for our player breakdowns. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment, bring a friend next time. Helps people find the show. <laughs> and for John Percota, I'm Rafi Cantor. We will see you next time.